This is our second in a series of two videos on response surface methods. Before watching this video, you should have watched response surface methods part one and read the instructor notes on response surface methods. So in the previous video, we talked about response surface designs and methods. And in this section, we're going to talk about generating these designs in JUMP and also talk about how we can evaluate the properties of these designs. And remember, the key to response surface methods is prediction. So when we analyze the design, we want to know, in general, how well might these designs perform. Okay. So what I'm going to do at this point is actually go over to JUMP and show how these designs are generated and talk about the various issues with them. So I'm going to open up Jump. In fact, I'm going to show there's two ways to generate them. And we'll start with the classical method. So we go under the DOE menu and go down to Response Surface. Okay. And what I'm going to select, let's, to make it interesting, let's pick three factors. In fact, I need to add one to make it three. Okay. okay, there we go. Just three factors, again, to keep this simple. Okay. So we now get a set of designs to choose from. There are the box banking designs. I'm actually not going to formally discuss them. Uh, whatever I discuss about central composites would um, apply to box banking designs. But central composites and box bankings are the um, workhorse of the response surface designs. So I'm going to select central composite. These other three types of designs, don't concern yourself with them. Uh, they have properties that are marginally of interest. I generally just generate the central composite design itself, and then I can modify it as I so desire. And I click Continue. Now it asks, where do you want to put the axial points? On face means you put them right on the faces of the cube that forms the experimental region. Rotatable is often a choice. And what rotatable means is that the prediction variance um, at any distance from the center of the region. So pick, picture the center of your experimental region. If you go some radial distance from that center and define a contour, the prediction variance is the same on that, at that distance all the way around the design region. So they're called rotatable because the prediction variance is constant at any for any specified radius. Now, as the radius increases, the prediction variance will typically go up. But for a specified region, okay, and a specified direction or distance, then in a rotatable design, the prediction variance is constant on a sphere uh, of that radius. Many uh, types of response surface designs are not rotatable. So if one moves in one direction in the experimental region, the prediction variance can behave differently than other regions. So you can read about rotatability in the notes. I, it's a pretty simple idea conceptually. So usually what people pick are on face or rotatable. Number of center points, that actually is an important question with uh, these central composite designs. I'm going to make the table okay, and see what the design looks like. Notice it's been completely randomized. One of the issues that I, I pointed out in the first video, I actually would not run the design this way. I would run the factorial points, then I would come back and take a look at the axial points. So when you generate one of these designs, even though we typically randomize, we actually sometimes 
in this case, we'll not want to randomize it. We'll generate it, and then we'll randomize the factorial portion separately. Okay. Now, notice it says de design evaluation. I have two center points. A prediction variance profile. This says the relative prediction variance, so think of uh, the standard deviation of the response being 1. We'll say sigma squared equals 1. Notice this is not a really good design because in the center of the region is where we're seeing the largest prediction variance. Okay. And if we take a look at the prediction surface, you can see it. So you look in the center of this region, notice it's mound shaped in the middle, then it goes down and then when you get to the very edges of the region the prediction variance explodes intuitively because we're now entering a region where we have very little data on which to base um, our prediction. So these models typically when you reach the boundaries the variance will go up but what's troubling is how large the variance is in the middle of the region. And by the way, there's something called fraction of design space. What does this mean? This basically takes the entire volume of your experimental region and then tells you what the prediction variance is over some proportion of the region. As an example for our design, it looks over this experimental region it actually calculates a volume and then estimates as you start from the center and you move out to the perimeter, okay, how does the experimental variance appear. So take a look at this design. I'm going to right click in the middle of the fraction of design space plot. I'm going to do a little customizing. Okay. I'm actually going to make this line orange and make the line width 2, so it's bolder. Okay. Then I'm going to do something else. I'm going to right click, okay. and where it says Edit, I'm actually going to copy the frame contents, everything that's in that frame. Okay. Now I'm going to back up. So this has two center points. Now I'm going to add 5. Okay. So now we want to add 5 center points. Okay. Okay. So then let's take a look at what happens. Okay. Whoops, I need, to, I need to back up before I do that. So I need to back up. Again, I'm going to select the central composite design, continue and this time pick five center points. And I want the design again to be rotatable. Then we look at the design evaluation. Okay, Let's take a look at the prediction variance surface. Okay. And we'll take a look at the prediction variance profile. It is getting a little flatter as we go along. And again, it changed on me. I'm going to go back, okay. generate the design. I want five center points, rotatable with five center points. It should not have changed that, so be careful. Okay. Okay. Now the prediction variance profile has changed. Now you can see the prediction variance is actually, one, it's lower, and two, it's more uniform across the interior region. Before the, the relative variance was about uh, 0.4 something, now it's down to about 0.2. And we can look at the fraction of design space plot. And I'm going to right-click, and under Edit, I'm going to 
paste frame contents. some reason it closed so I'm going to actually show you in the notes what happened okay so everything I talked about is described in the notes so I'm not going to go back over it again but you can read through the discussion and there is the um, fraction of design space plot if I get to it here so here is the design notice with one center point. The prediction variance goes up rapidly over the design space with three center points. It's relatively flat. So in central composites, the number of center points is important. You can actually try a number of different values of center points. Uh, up to some number that you can afford. Usually three to five is about all people can afford. The designs are pretty big as it is. And at that point I've already talked about saddle systems. So that's basically how these designs are generated in Jump.